Welcome to Academic Game Tutorials. This is our fourth lecture video on operations research. Here, we are learning the graphical method. As we have discussed in previous lectures, we usually get to see four types of cases in graphical method. In the previous three lectures we finished discussing the first three cases for unique optimal solution, an infinite number of optimal solution, and an unbounded optimal solution for a linear programming problem using graphical method. This is our last lecture on graphical method, and in this lecture we will discuss graphical method for no feasible region or no feasible solution. So, in this lecture we will solve a linear programming problem by graphical method for no feasible region or no feasible solution. Let's look at an example on this. So, here we have a linear programming problem. We are asked to solve this linear programming problem using the graphical method. Here, it is given that, maximize, z equals to 3x1, plus 2x2. Subject to these two given inequality equations. Where there are two variables in each of them. And, at last it is said that x1 and x2 are greater than or equal to 0. So, let's solve this problem now. At first, we will replace all the inequality constraints by using equation. Here we can see two inequalities in these two equations. We will simply replace these two inequalities or unequal in signs by using equal signs and convert them into equations. If there were three inequalities we would make three equations out of them. Since, here we have two inequalities, so we will get two equations. So, the first equation will be x1 plus x2 equals to 4. And, the second equation will be x1 plus x2 equals to 1. So, these two inequalities are converted to two equations. This is equation number 1, and, this is equation number 2. We have seen two methods of plotting the graph in previous lectures. You can use any one of the two methods that seem easier to you for plotting the graph. The first method seems simple to me, so I will use the first method for plotting the graph where we have to divide the whole equation by the number on right hand side and then plot the values in the graph. So, to plot the equation 1 on graph, first look at the right hand side of the equation number 1, here we have 4 on the right hand side of the equation, so, we will divide the whole equation number 1 by the number 4. Dividing the equation number 1 by 4, we will get, x1 divided by 4, plus, x2 divided by 4, equals to, 4 divided by 4, which gives us 1. Similarly in equation 2 also, here we have 1 on the right hand side of the equation number 2, so, we will divide the whole equation number 2 by the number 1. Dividing the equation number 2 by 1, we will get, x1 divided by 1, plus, x2 divided by 1, equals to, 1. Now, we know that the equation for straight line is, x divided by a, plus y divided by b, equals to 1, here, a is the intercept of x-axis, b, is the intercept of y-axis, and then there is one on the right-hand side. Now, if we compare the straight line equation to these two equations, we can see the same format. Here, in equation 1, 4 is the intercept of x1, 4 is the intercept of x2, and there is one on the right-hand side, so, this is a straight line equation. Similarly, the other equation is also straight line equation. Now, we will plot these two straight line equations on a graph. So, here we have our graph, we have used a plain sheet to make the graph, you can use a graph paper if you want. Along this axis we have x1. Along this axis we have x2. And, this point is the origin or zero. Now, on the graph we can see that the ranges are taken as 0, 1, 2, up to 4. We have taken the points at distance of 1 in this case. Now, to plot the first equation in the graph, in equation number 1, below x1 there is 4, below x2 there is also 4, so, we have 4, and 4. In the graph, we will take a point at plus 4 on the x1 axis, and along x2 we take a point at plus 4. Now, we will join this point at 4, and this point at 4, using a line. Let's denote this line by number 1, 
so we can understand that this line was plotted from equation number 1. We can also write the equation number 1 beside the line number 1 to show that this line belongs to first equation. Now, in equation number 2, below x1 there is 1, below x2 there is 1, so, we have 1, and 1. In the graph, we will take a point at 1 on the x1 axis, and along x2 we take a point at 1. Now, we will join this point at 1, and this point at 1, using a line. Let's denote this line by number 2, so we can understand that this line was plotted from equation number 2. We can also write the equation number 2 beside the line number 2 to show that this line belongs to second equation. So, here we have two lines for two equations. Now, we will look for inequalities and draw the arrows on these two lines. Now, if we look into the conditions given at first in the question, according to the first condition, the first line will be greater than or equal to 4, so, in the line number 1, we will place arrows in the opposite direction from the origin, because there is greater than or equal to sign. Similarly, according to the second condition, the second line will be less than or equal to 1, so, in the line number 2, we will place arrows facing towards the origin, because there is less than or equal to sign. Always remember that, if there is greater than or equal to sign, we will place the arrows on the line, facing in the opposite direction from the origin. So, here is the origin, and we have placed the arrows facing in the opposite direction from the origin, and if there is less than or equal to sign, we will place the arrows on the line, facing towards the origin. So, here is the origin, and we have placed the arrows facing towards the origin. Now, we have to find out the common region for these two lines that is satisfied by the direction of the arrows in these two lines. In the line number 1, the arrow is facing in this direction facing opposite to the origin, so line 1 covers this area opposite to the origin. In the line number 2, the arrow is facing in this direction facing towards the origin, so line 2 covers this area towards the origin. If we look carefully, since the arrows are facing in opposite directions from one another, there is no common or feasible region covered by the two lines on the graph. We will not get any feasible region in this scenario. So, in this case we will not get any feasible solution. So, we can finally write that, since, there is no point, x1, comma, x2, common to the shaded region, there is no feasible region. Hence, this linear programming problem has no optimal solution. So, this was an example of no optimal solution or no feasible region by graphical method for a linear programming problem. Thank you for watching this video. If this lecture was helpful, subscribe to Academic Game Tutorials on YouTube for more updated videos on operations research.